Hello, my name is Mr. S, and today I'm going to be talking about behaviors and disabilities for students in the classroom. I'm also going to cover strategies for students, parents, and teachers all to work together in order to monitor the progress of the student. Today, I'm going to talk about a special student of mine. His name is Brian. Brian has ADHD, Attention Deficit Disorder, which ultimately allows him to lose focus and oftentimes get frustrated with what's going on around him by other things around his person that is taking his distraction away. I ultimately want Brian to have the most success as possible. So there's three things that I'm going to talk about that allow him to have the most success. One of them is I want to keep Brian moving around in the classroom. When Brian is in one seat, you often see him getting agitated, frustrated playing with his hands. I want to keep him moving in group scenarios that allow him to keep gaining information and gaining knowledge. Number two is I want the students to write down the homework and I want the teacher and the parents to work, down with it, work, work with this. When Brian writes down his homework each and every night, we're going to check off to make sure he does his homework. That will keep him organized and keep him in a chronological guide when doing his homework so he can know each task and cross it off once he completes it. The next thing is, we're not going to we're not going to subject Brian to long projects over time. Brian has the ability or not the ability, the drawback of essentially losing his attention when doing long projects. Um, he often time forgets what he's going to do and works on other assignments instead of working on each day the assignment in order to reach the conclusion. So those are three successful tasks. Keeping him moving in the classroom, making sure that we're crossing off his homework as we do it, and number three, keeping the assignments short over a couple of days. We don't want long journey assignments where he's basically losing what he's learning and focusing on other things. The next is accommodations. I want to make sure that Brian is in the classroom being accommodated when working with his peers. I want to keep positive behavior. Let Brian know we're on his side. Also, I want to offer rewards. When Brian does well, I want to make sure he knows academically he's done well. Give him points. Well, not extra points, but make sure that each thing is graded. And if he does a great job, let him know. And I want to minimize distractions. That's another accommodation that's important. I want to make sure that around the classroom there's not too many bright colors flashing things, little things that are going to draw his attention away. I want him to stay on task. With all students, that's all we want, is so to stay on task and acquire as much information as possible. And I want to create a quiet environment. Organizing instruction is important, and according to the Organizing Instruction and Study to Improving Students' Learning Practice Guide, we don't want to cram the students. The longer period they have in between tests is important. However, a student with ADHD could lose attention. So when you have the, the reviews and the tests, we want to make sure that in between they have something to do. They're always acquiring knowledge. Every single day we want homework and study guides for them to keep learning. And another thing that is important is we want this test to be cumulative because that will increase study, study motivation and have the students on their toes. And the last thing is working with the parent and progress monitoring. This is the most important part of what we're talking about right now, progress monitoring. We want to always have checkpoints. Throughout each lesson, we want the students to know that we're going to be watching him, we're going to be quizzing him, we're going to be on him. That will keep fluidity, that will make sure that while he's doing his work, he knows that somebody's going to check up on him. And not in a bad way, but just to make sure that we, he knows that we and the parent are working with him for optimal success. So, one, checkpoints to make sure that his attention is there. Two, we're going to have brief assignments for the child. Meaning, quizzes with a few amount of questions, but broad understandings. So we're not going to throw a million questions at him. We're going to throw a couple questions at him and let him get a broad understanding as the unit plan is taking this course. And also, when it comes to the test, we want to make sure that we're asking each type of question. That way, 
true or false, we throw a little simple questions in there, multiple choice, we make sure that he could break down choosing the best answer, and long assessment, allowing him to fully write on paper what he's learned. And to monitor, we need to make sure that the parents are up to date. So I want to have weekly progress reports so the parents know that we are all working together for Brian. And when Brian's doing well, the teacher's doing well, and the parent is happy because ultimately it's the parent's child, and they want the most success for their child. So that's how we're going to keep everybody intact with progress monitoring. Those three ways, create checkpoints, have brief assessments and detailed assessments, and often having weekly monitoring checks to make sure the student's on task and happy. Because if the student has a positive attitude, that means he's going to be happy and come to school every day ready to learn and not be frustrated like he was before we got to him. <clears throat> so those are my tools for ultimate success in the classroom and classroom monitoring and working with the parent and the student for ultimate success. Ultimate success. My name is Dr. Professor S. Thank you for sitting with me today.